Hey gang, welcome back for another video here on Joe Chem. Okay gang, so we've spent plenty of time with amino acids. We've gotten nice and cozy with them. We're super comfortable with them. We know them. So now we need to take them and see how they function when things start to get bigger. And what I mean by bigger is amino acids, they're wonderful, but there's more to life than just amino acids. In fact, they are building blocks for life. And you know, what happens is when you string a few amino acids together, or even if you just string more than one together, you get what is called a peptide. So in this video, I just wanna talk about peptides because if you get a peptide and you really make it really super duper 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 long, you get a polypeptide, which you can also call a protein, but that's another video. So we're talking about peptides here. So like I said, amino acids are the building blocks for peptides. So if you stick two amino acids together, you can get a dipeptide. If you stick three together, you can get a tripeptide, you know, and the list goes on, right? So uh, I wanna talk a little bit more about some of their properties and then I will do a little bit of naming, which is something we don't do too often, but a typical, you know, I've seen exam questions where you are given a sequence of amino acid abbreviations connected together so you have a peptide and you need to draw the structure. So we will be using our amino acid knowledge in this video. Okay, so what does a peptide look like? So I just want to draw a dye, a very generic dye peptide for you. Okay, so if we have, what I'm going to do is draw two amino acids with charge. So I'm going to just specify R1 at our C2 carbon. So let's just say if we have these two bad boys together, R2. And you know what I'm even going to do? I'm just going to draw them like so. And I'll draw them kind of as Zwitter, as Zwitter ion when we put them together. So if we had two amino acids like this, we can, I didn't draw it so nicely, and if you want to know how, watch the peptide synthesis video, but if we smush these together through a condensation reaction, right, so that means we form water and we, it is driven off, so we lose water. This is, it's basically, it is amide synthesis, right, amide uh, formation we get a dipeptide here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have, so what I'm actually gonna do is we will basically lose this, is what I'm saying. There's the water. Whoops, yikes, that is not what I wanted to do. <laughs> Sorry, gang. Uh, it doesn't really matter, we lose that, as well as one, one of these H's, so I can even there's your water. We're going to stick this nitrogen onto that carbonyl carbon. So if you can see this, I'll have R2 down here. I'll have my carbonyl up top. And it's this that's now going to be this dotted carbon that's now going to be bonded to this asterisk nitrogen. And then obviously we still have R1. And then we round out the amino acid over here. Like I said, now I'm going to be drawing it. I'll draw it in the Zwitter ionic form. So like I said, it's amide synthesis. Clearly we made this bond right here. We have this new nitrogen carbonyl carbon bond. And in the process, I know I incorrectly circled it first, but we, we're losing an H obviously from this nitrogen and we're losing the OH over here from the carboxylic acid. It's a condensation reaction. So Dip, you know, when you peptide synthesis, right, check out the video if you're interested for more, but it's just gonna be driving off water, stringing amino acids together. Now I wanna talk about some of the properties here. So the thing with amino acids is that they are planar, they are rigid, okay? So let's look at that and why that might be the case. Well, so clearly we have, you know, in the backbone, right, the backbone being the straight chain, you know, we have, carbons that are sp2 hybridized right they literally have a planar geometry and if we remember if we think back to our carboxylic acid derivatives knowledge right we have amides and this bond that we form right here right which is a bond you form anytime you tack on a new amino acid on you know with another amino acid this is called a peptide bond okay so it has you know 
it has the name right here because we're doing peptide formation, but we've seen this bond before because we've done amide formation before. And remember, we drew resonance with amides, and we saw that in that resonance, while nitrogen does not love that negative charge, this structure was a good contributor to the overall hybrid. So the thing is, while this peptide bond looks like a single bond, it is not. It is halfway, it, fun it, it has a lot of characteristics. Its length is halfway between that of a double bond and a single bond, right? So if it, it does, it's not a true single bond, which has free rotation about it, and it's not a double bond, right, which has limited rotation because it has to have p orbitals parallel, right, it has that criteria for double bonds. So because this is a one and a half, you know, if you will, a one and a half bond, or something that is not a single bond, not a double bond, but something in between, you know, it has limited rotation about it. So that's why when you have peptides, you know, the backbone of these peptides, right, we're not talking about the R groups dangling off of them, we're talking about what's happening in the middle. They are rigid and they are planar, okay? Now I think I really wanted to make, and, and, and it boils down to the fact, right, that this thing that we are calling a peptide bond is, you know, the bond we see in amides and we know because of the resonance, because this is a good contributor to the overall hybrid, right? We're not just a single, we're not a double, we're somewhere in between, okay? So one more thing I kind of want to mention, we stuck two of these amino acids together. If you wanted to refer to each one of them in the peptide, you can call this like, oh, I'm pointing to this amino acid residue, right? That word is kind of uh, your way to maybe say, okay, like in this peptide, I'm, I'm referencing this isoleucine residue, okay? So I believe that's all I wanted to kind of say. To round out this video, I'm gonna erase this. I wanna do two problems. The problems are going to be, because someone can provide you with a string of amino acid abbreviations all connected. And what you need to do is come up with the peptide structure. And what I did not do in here is maybe the trick is that someone would expect you to make sure you draw the proper stereochemistry here. They will either tell you if you're dealing with, you know, S-alanine or whatever, but if they don't tell you, you just assume it's an S configuration because that is what is abundant in nature. Okay, gang? So let me clean this up. We'll draw some structures. We'll call it a video. Okay, gang, let's get a name in. So, if someone gives you something like this on an exam, they can say, all right, and I didn't say this, but we could say at, at neutral pH. That's right, someone could ask you to draw a peptide at a given pH. So, you will need to, you know, remember how we did the pH elevator nonsense to see how, which protons would be on or off. But, if someone just says, at neutral pH, draw leucine and phenylalanine attached together. Now, that's, I said, you know, I said leucine attached to phenylalanine. If you kind of wanted to say this properly and make sure you're talking the talk, you would say, Lu right, you just dropped I and E, so this would be leucyl phenylalanine. So you say the last one, phenylalanine. You say the last one, but anything before that, you just string it on together like leucyl phenylalanine. So maybe if this was even isoleucine, you would say isoleucyl leucyl phenylalanine. You just string it all together. Okay, so how do we do this? So the way I like to do this is just make sure struck, and sometimes you'll see this in like little fun blocks like this. Because why not? Draw blocks. Let's have some fun with it. I like to get everyone connected together. I like to get things structurally put in place. Then I'll go to each C2 carbon and make sure that my R group is attached in a way where I have S stereochemistry because no one said anything about anything being different. I'm going to assume S stereochemistry at each C2 carbon in each amino acid residue. You see how many words I worked in right there? That was pretty slick. Okay, so leucine. This is, see, this is where memorizing your amino acids come in, comes in handy, okay? So if no one ever tells you which end is which, Assume this is, left is always the end terminus. That just means your amino acid will end with nitrogen over here. And on the other side, this would be the C terminus. Okay? So, I can right off the bat say I'm going to have an NH3 plus over here. I'm at neutral pH. 
I'm going to have a protonated amino group on the end. So I know, bam, I draw one line. This is a C2 carbon. I'm gonna draw that because I'm going to attach an R group. I'm not gonna have stereochemistry on it. I wanna make sure I come back to it and remember to do that. So at this point, right, I need to have leucine on there. The R group for leucine is this, okay? So it's an isobutyl group. So then we draw one more line. And then at this point, that's where I have my carbonyl carbon. This is like an amino acid at this point. It would be just leucine if I did this, but we're not doing that, remember? It's at this point that I need to continue the chain to draw phenylalanine. So this isn't a bond to an O minus, this is a peptide bond to a nitrogen with a hydrogen, okay? So then at this point, I'm just basically drawing another amino acid. You can almost block this out of your mind. So I'm gonna draw one more line, and then this is another C2 carbon, okay? So now I need to draw the R group for phenylalanine. And of course, since I'm terrible and I don't have my amino acids memorized, so it's, you can draw a pH, right? This would be the same thing as actually drawing a benzene ring. Okay, but it's really nice and clean if you just draw pH, so for the phenyl group, so that's what we're gonna do. So then I've drawn my C2, and then C2 is attached to a carbonyl, right? And I know this is a carboxylic acid, and I don't have any more amino acids to draw. This is not a peptide bond. This is just going to be my O, my deprotonated carboxylic acid, right? Okay, so structurally, this is correct. But remember, now we need to double back and look at each stereocenter and make sure we have an S configuration. And we'll draw in blue, or green. We need to have an S configuration at each, okay? So remember, you can just do this nice and simply. Nitrogen is going to be the highest priority. Then obviously the carbonyl carbon wins out because it's attached to a nitrogen and an oxygen. Then we have this up here. So our wheel's looking like this. It looks like S, and that's what we want. So we're going to make this a wedge. Okay. Sweet. And then if we look here, right, first priority is going to nitrogen. Second's going over here, third's going here. So our wheel looks R, that's not what we want, right? We, we want to be S, so it looks like R, but if we dash this and our lowest priority group hydrogen is facing us, right? We will actually be S, okay? So let me erase this so you can get a clear visual. If you need to pause the video. Ah, well. Sorry if you were looking for that, but yeah. So I know your stereochem geniuses. You just need to go back and make sure that you have an S configuration there. But this isn't that hard. Honestly, in my opinion, these are free points. As long as you've memorized your structure, it just really sucks if you got to a test and you had, you just were looking at this and you're like, well, I don't know what leucine is. I don't know what phenylalanine is, right? So if you just put the work in and memorize your structures, this would, might be some easy points on a, you know, last midterm or a final exam, okay? So real quick, I wanna erase this. Uh, we're gonna do one more and call it quits. Okay, gang, one more peptide. We'll call it a video, and I get it. Okay, so if we look here, we see a familiar friend. So we got phenylalanine, leucine, and proline. So phenylalanol, leucyl, proline. Really strange. But neutral pH, right? So nothing crazy going on. Uh, we got, so we're actually being told the C terminus is on our left and the N terminus is on our right. So that's kind of against the, it's against the kind of convention, but that's what we're being told. So we're not asking questions. We're just following what we're told. Okay. So remember C terminus over here. So I'm going to just start off with this. This is going to be negative, right? That's our carboxyl or you know, our deprotonated carboxylic acid. So remember now I'm going to draw here. This is C, a, a C2. So now I'm gonna to have to draw phenylalanine. So I'm not gonna worry about stereochem. I'm just gonna structurally attach the R group. And then remember, I go up and I have a nitrogen and it's not you know, an NH3 plus. I have an H and then I'm going to draw a peptide bond, right? Remember, there's my peptide bond. I have my carbonyl, so now when I go up here, this is another C2, okay? So I'll dot these so we know to come back. And then at this point, we have leucine, right? A familiar friend I'm going to attach leucine like this. Then we just keep on trucking. So when I go down here, I have a nitrogen. And remember, it's not gonna terminate the chain. We have to go to proline. So what I'm gonna do is I draw another peptide bond. 
and then I draw what will be my last C2 carbon. And so here's the weird thing about proline. Proline is an amino acid where the R group loops, it's, it's a ring. So you start your, your R, your C2 has an R group that ends up attaching to the uh, nitrogen in your amino acid. So what's super strange, so we're gonna have a nitrogen and it's gonna have a positive charge, but I wanna draw the R group first. You'll see what I mean. So it's actually a five membered ring like this. So nitrogen's a part of the R group. So because nitrogen has two bonds here and it needs a positive charge, we only have two hydrogens involved. Proline's the one weirdo, okay? So we structurally have our amino acid. We need to double back and make sure we do our due diligence with stereochem. Okay, so remember, S configurations for all. We got an S here, we got an S here, and we got an S here. But we need to know, we need to play the fun game wedge or dash, okay? So remember, priority one, priority two, priority three. So turn the wheel, we look S, and look at that, we want that, so we actually look S, so if we wedge this, we get the stereochem we want. Now here, right? Priority one, priority two, priority three. We look R, but we want S, so we're not gonna wedge this, we are going to dash this. Cool. Last but not least, priority one, priority two, priority three. We look S, that's what we want. There we go. Easy as pie. Okay, gang, I hope you think that, you know, this video, if anything, was a nice breath of fresh air. It, you know, took some of the knowledge that you've learned about amino acids and put it to the test. It all made sense. We're smiling, everything's hunky-dory. Okay, cool. If you need more peptide knowledge, okay, there are some videos that talk about protein structure, primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary, so it's a little in the biology realm, so check that out if you're interested there, but if you want to uh, you know, consider amino acid, or sorry, peptide synthesis, I have a video on that, so I'll make sure to link those in the description below this video. Thank you for watching, thank you for hopefully liking and subscribing, and no matter what, I'll see you all in the next video.